Good morning and welcome to my vendor booth. Since we can't do homeschool conventions this year, we are taking advantage of meeting in my family room to share with you about Right Shop Primary. If you have children in kindergarten through third grade, this is the demo for you. I'm going to be walking you through the three levels of our primary books. I am Kim Kautzer with Right Shop, and we have three different levels for your students. We have Right Shop Primary, which I'll be sharing with you today. We have Right Shop Junior, which is for your upper elementary kids in eight, uh, grades three through six. And then we have Right Shop One and Two, which are the high school levels, I'm sorry, middle school and high school. They start at junior high, seventh grade. So today our focus will be on the youngest levels of our books, the primary books. Some parents wonder if you can even teach writing to a kindergartner or a first grader or second grader who has limited to no writing skills, maybe isn't reading, maybe can only read a few words or write their name. How do you teach writing to a child who doesn't have these skills yet. And that's part of what we do in Right Shop Primary is help you figure out how to do just that. You want to start planting the seeds of writing, even though they may not be able to actually physically write yet. You want to start building the blocks of the writing process so that when they get to older elementary school or junior high, they're not afraid of the blank page. They're not afraid of the writing process because they've been doing it gradually, gently, and in a fun way all through their elementary years. Speaking of fun, that is the name of the game with Right Shop Primary. One of the things that um, it, we've wanted to do to make this more engaging for your young children is to add a lot of hands-on activity multiple modalities, things that are visual, kinesthetic, auditory, motion games, songs, things that kids can connect with. And when they are young, that is how they learn. They get older and their learning styles start to emerge. They may become, like one of my daughters, a child who just really loves books and workbooks and textbooks. That's only about a fourth of your learners. You may have a child like my son who is, well, was wiggly, squirrely, squirmy, can't sit still, can't do anything on his own. Uh, you know, that he wasn't always like that, but he was, he was kinesthetic as a really young child and through his elementary years until he became more of a logical thinker and you know his learning style kind of started to change a little bit as he got older. So, but you know when kids are little, why do you think we can walk down the aisle at Target or some other, you know, a toy store, and everything is colorful, everything is bright, everything is hands-on and manipulative for your young children because that's how they learn best. So that's what we're going to show you today. Some of the things you can do with your kids to get them engaged. So. What makes Right Shop Primary unique? And we're going to talk about some of those things right now, if I can get my. Well, I guess I can't. I'll have to do this manually. Oh, I know why. Never mind me. There we go. Okay, we're good. All right, so. First, let's talk about the kinds of writing we do in Right Shop Primary. Right Shop Primary is a very gentle approach to the writing process. This is not where they're going to be creating the great American novel. It just doesn't happen when they're in kindergarten or in second grade. It's a gentle parent-led program. This is not a here's a work page, fill it out. There are a little bit of pencil activities here and there for them, but mostly it's a parent-led course that gently guides the child through different steps of games and activities and even some writing that helps them be prepared 
for future writing as they get older. It's like anything else. Step by step, inch by inch, bit by bit, line upon line, and those building blocks start to become cemented. Some parents have been asking us, um, how do I know which level to put my child in? We have a placement test on our uh, uh, 30 second quiz and Misty can post the link to that. It's really um, easy for you to be able to figure out where to put your kids. But if you're second guessing yourself and thinking, my child doesn't know how to hold a pencil or my, my third grader isn't reading very well, or my third grader hates to write, therefore I should put my third grader in book A. Mm, we don't really want you to do that, and we don't encourage it, because we want you to put your kids at the level of their thinking skills. So, if you're using book A, it's going to be super simplistic. So like in lesson one, I was really good about marking some of my spots in some of the other lessons. Oh, here we go. Okay. So you're having a little conversation with your child and you're going to say, let's talk about pets and you're going to talk about different kinds of pets that you have. So it might say, let's write a, a title for our story. We'll call it our pets. Um, how many pets do we have? Two. That's right, we have two pets. That is called a complete sentence. Say that with me. We have two pets. Then your child repeats it. Okay, that is not going to fly with most eight-year-olds because even though they don't know how to read or write yet very well, mentally, thinking-wise, their cognitive skills are beyond we have two pets. That's how they might write if they had a pencil. But if they were to talk to you, they could tell you a whole lot more. So you really don't want to put them in a kindergarten level if they are able to articulate and speak and have a conversation. So in Write Shop, you can put your kids together in a level if they are close in age and or skill. So you could put your K1 together in book A. You could put your first and second grader together in book B. You could put a first and third grader together in book B because we have activities within each level, each book that are called flying higher and smaller steps. Smaller steps helps you tone down the activity so it's not so overwhelming for a child who's a little more reluctant or who's younger. And flying higher gives you some really fun and different ways to challenge your child who may be a little more motivated or older, but for your convenience, you really need to put these kids together. You've got a lot of children and not a lot of time or you know whatever your, your home situation is, we totally get that. And so the levels are not graded, but they have great recommendations based on where we, we have discovered that kids fit best. Um, so anyway, you can you know put your kids together like the K1 level is book A. Book B is the one, two level with reluctant third graders. And book C is the second, third grade level. If you have a reluctant fourth grader, they're better off in Right Shop Junior book D most of the time. If you ever have questions about where to place your kiddos, you can always call our office and talk to one of our um, curriculum advisors who can walk you through and help you if you uh, aren't sure. Okay, so let's talk about the kinds of writing we do in Write Shop Primary. They will write about a personal experience. They may write, and it depends on which book they're in. Not every book has all of these, but fairy tales, poems, simple nonfiction, friendly letters, descriptive writing, um, stories about the community. There are lots of different kinds of writing that they'll do. When they're in the uh, book A, we're focusing on things that are thematic in every lesson, but that also resonate with young children. So there may be a theme about animals, a theme about colors, a theme about vehicles, a theme about trains, things that interest and engage children, family, friends. Uh, as they get into book B, then the themes start to change a little bit more 
and you might have something on a community or um, maybe on dinosaurs. So there are, there are just different ways that we try to hang the writing on something that's going to be interesting to your kids. So for instance, in book B, one of the themes is ocean creatures. And in that particular lesson, we're teaching the children how to uh, write a story with a problem and a solution. It's the first time we're introducing problem and solution, but we hang the story on a um, on the ocean theme. Okay, so that's going to give your kids some fun with the activities. Um, and I meant to, oh, there they are. I do have them. I just keep these handy for me. Every um, lesson has a picture book. I'll be talking about that. And so, okay, kinds of writing. Let's talk about the schedule. How, how long do we write? How often do we write? That's a question we get often. And I'm a homeschool mom, veteran homeschool mom. My youngest graduated in 2007, is that right? And um, so yes, I'm a, I'm a wife of 45 years, a grandma to nine. My oldest grandson is 20. So I've been around the block a bit and I homeschooled for 15 years. In those years, I discovered I was not cut out for the five day a week, every single day, 180 days of activities in a, an English book or a history book. It just was not not my teaching style and I wanted to do more hands-on things. We did a lot of unit studies and they were just not conducive to that. But every once in a while, you need a book that's gonna guide you through a subject. Like you may be totally Charlotte Mason or Montessori. You may be um, you know, doing unschooling, but it's hard to, to do those and just give your kids pencil and paper. They still need to be guided through the writing process. So that's some of what we wanna talk about today. But let me show you the schedule. And there we go. Okay, so in Right Child Primary, we actually have two different schedules. Well, we have three, but only two that we really recommend. This one is the, um, the most common schedule. This is the schedule that most moms will use when they're homeschooling their kids. It's three weeks per lesson. There are 10 lessons in this book, 10 lessons in every primary book. Each lesson takes three weeks and you are working three days the first two weeks and two days the third week. Every other day is so doable, even if you have several children. Each day there's a different activity set. So whether you're doing lesson one, lesson eight, lesson 10, when you're on activity set one, it will always happen on this first day of the three weeks. All right, so that's um, kind of a look at the schedule. You can easily plug in. So here you can see it says activity set four eight on that oval, okay? That tells you that it's lesson four, activity set eight. So it's the very last activity of that lesson. So that's what I, what I would, on my schedule, then I would just look for activity set eight. The other schedule that we have is a two week schedule. This is really great if you're starting a little late in the year, like you're maybe eight or 10 weeks into the school year and then you decide you wanna jump into Right Shop, you can finish a book in two weeks. So this is, this would be workable if your child could go at a little bit faster pace because you're writing four days a week instead of three or two. But um, it's also great if you if you want to try to get through two or three books in a year and a half or whatever, you can do that as well. All right. So I talked about the activity sets and there are eight. There's a worksheet that they do on the first day, and I'll say day, but it's actually the day on the calendar on the schedule. So it's not five days in a row, but on day one, they do their worksheet, which I'll show you in a sec. On day two, you play some writing games. On day three, you do your story planning. 
As they get older, you would call it brainstorming. But at this point, story planning is a lot gentler of a term. On day four, they do their story writing. On day five, they do simple editing. Don't let that scare you because it is very simple, very doable. On day six, there's some free writing. On day seven, they publish. And on the eighth day, there are optional activities. And that's also the day that you will do your evaluating of that week's lesson. So let's just start at the beginning and talk about the worksheets. Unlike our junior books, which have a full-blown workbook with graphic organizers and checklists and pre-writing worksheets and things like that, WriteShop Primary only has a skinny little packet, all right? So there are 10 worksheets in a packet. I don't know if you can see this with the glare, but here are the, the 10 worksheets. So you just see the little um, picture of the of what the worksheets look like, a snapshot. But there are 10 of them, and they're also, um, they're, they have lined, grade level lined paper on the back. So this is the very first worksheet from the very first book. This is from Right Shop Primary Book A. This is called Animal Fun. The kids trace the first letter of the word, and then they draw their own animal picture here and write the word underneath it by picking something from the word bank. These are all three letter animal names. So it's very simple for your kids. But you can see now why I'm saying that this would not thrill your eight year old to come into Write Shop Primary Book A and have a worksheet that looks like this. You don't wanna make them feel like they are incapable or that they are dumb or that they have to go down a grade because they, they can't read yet. That's, that is going to be so counterproductive for you guys. So keep it age appropriate as much as you can. So this sheet is introducing our animal theme and starting to get kids just doing a simple pencil exercise. As they progress through book A, the activity sheets are going to get a little bit more involved as they should the kids are growing through the through the year so if each lesson takes three weeks this is lesson one it takes the one week then we've got one on my favorite things that takes three weeks so now you're six weeks into the school year then there's the next nine weeks so i mean the next uh three weeks we have um bright ideas, three things I'd like to write about. Um, then we move on to book ideas and book titles. The very last one at this level is talking about what comes first, what comes next, and what comes last in a story. They have a little um, activity where they cut things out and put them in the right place. and you can see that this is appropriate for the end of kindergarten or first grade, but again, it's not, it's still not your um, third grade level. If you have a child who's a rising second grader, they could, you could see that they're, they're probably at this place and so they could start in book B um, the next year. All right, so that's an example from book A. This is the first activity sheet from book B. This one, they're learning to write a friendly letter. So here they have um, a, um, a sample letter, but it's lacking detail. And in each of these questions, they need to figure out what else could be happening in each of those sentences so that they could add detail. What a fun way to prepare them for a lesson on writing a friendly letter because they're already thinking about how to say more about their letter. And then book C, which is the third grade level, I mean, second, third grade, that's the yellow book. Um, that one has, I just pulled a couple out to show you. So this is from the middle of the book. And this one, uh, they are describing a place so they have words about this pond scene 
and they choose the words they want and then they write a couple of sentences at the bottom of the paper. And this is one of the later lessons where they read this, this book report. They, they um, circle the best title and then they draw a picture of that, of a cover, a book cover for that book. So these are strictly an introduction. They're not meant to be exhaustive. They're not meant to be comprehensive. They just introduce the kids to the lesson. Pre-writing is one of the most fun things that you will do with your kids in Write Shop Primary. Pre-writing activities are always hands-on and don't involve extra writing. They may be things that um, require them to uh, get up and move. For instance, if they were in Book B and doing that friendly letter, uh, activity that lesson one of the the things that they'll do there is the friendly letter boogie so you teach them you shake hands with for the greeting because the greeting well I'll take that back you start at the top you start at your head you pat your head for the heading you shake hands for the greeting you wiggle your body for the body of the letter you close your feet together for the closing and you write your name on the floor with your foot for the signature. You go from top to bottom just as they would on paper. So it's a way to help them remember the steps of writing a formatted friendly letter. It's very simple, very fun. You do this a few times during the three weeks to keep it fresh and to help them remember. So activities like that. You also have activities that are not um, hands-on, uh, they're not physical, but they're still uh, manipulative or uh, maybe they're, they're visual, uh, like um, you might have a fishing game where you're, you're using fish on a magnet, paper fish, and the, the fish are in a, a bowl or a bucket or on the floor, and the magnet is on a string and your child fishes for a magnet and picks up the fish that has a paper clip on its uh, front of its face. And as they pick up a fish, they talk about the community helper that is on that fish. You're fishing for community helpers and you just talk about things they know about. What do policemen do? What do firemen do? What do you like about the garbage man when he comes down our street? So you have these kinds of conversations with your kids. As they get older, they're going to be a little bit different. It may be a postcard that your child, you know, looks at pictures of either have you actually have a postcard or you make your own postcards. And you talk about if you were mailing this postcard to grandma, what is one thing you could tell her about this place? Pretend like you're visiting this place. What is one thing you could tell her? So again, it's oral. Your child's not writing a postcard but they're playing a game to prepare them for this activity. Um, there are lots of these kinds of hands-on things that they're doing throughout the lessons. Guided writing practice is another step of the pre-writing. And this is a modeling and teaching time where you are working on a big chart paper with big pen or pencil, um, like a felt tip marker. Your children are sitting and watching you do this and then halfway through roughly in book A, we start introducing pointers. And a pointer can be something like a, um, a, a wooden sword, it can be a lightsaber, it can be a fairy's wand, it can be a straw, it can be a fancy pencil with a cute topper on it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Have an assortment of these in, your, um, in a can on your table. And then when you're working on your guided writing, there will be times periodically where you're going to have to ask your kids some questions, like take your pointer and point to the capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. Show me where it is. And so they will point. Point to the period at the end of the sentence. They will point. Again, it just involves their physical activity. It's more ways for those brain cells to make the connection for your child to start to realize it. The period goes at the end of the sentence. The capital letter starts the sentence. That makes sense? So again, you got something fun like pointers. The guided writing, if you don't have a, a chart paper and, and it's not in your budget, it's okay. You can sit next to your child and work on a big sheet of construction paper. You just want it big enough where it can serve as a good model for them without everything becoming too scrunched together. 
Guided writing usually happens every, most every day that writing is scheduled. Personally, I don't think you need to do guided writing every single day. I think it's important to do it the first couple of days of each writing cycle to get your kids familiar with the, the concept. And if they love it, let them keep going, but you don't want them to get tired of it or bored of it. So once they have begun the writing assignment themselves, then you can probably stop doing the guided writing for that lesson. Then you can pick it up again on a new lesson. This is a chance for you to follow a simple script that is in the book. The script is going to be um, age appropriate. And one of the things that we often will do at conferences is ask parents to flip through if they can't figure out a placement level. Flip through, look at this conversation. Can your child have this oral conversation with you? And if they say yes, then you say then that would be a good level because the younger level would be too, um, you know, would be too childish for them, but they're ready, they can speak it. And the reason I keep telling you this is because your child does not have to do all the writing Himself, himself. He can um, share the writing with you. He can write the words he knows while you write the words you know. Well, the words, all the rest of the words. <laughs> I hope you know the rest of the words. Um, or maybe you share as he gets older. You write a sentence, he writes a sentence. You write a sentence, he writes a sentence. This helps him not feel like he has to be responsible for all of the writing. It helps him if you can hold the thoughts for him long enough to get the writing out. It takes a long time and it wears kids out if they have to do a lot of writing and they don't have the skill yet. So just sharing the writing with them is great, but do not hesitate ever to do all the writing from their dictation. It will not only give you a really valuable, um, like a mem memoir, almost a little, you know, they're just, their the way that they spoke and the kind of writing the words that they were able to use that you could write down for them um, would be just such a, a precious treasure for you to have as they get older because their spoken vocabulary is going to far exceed what they can write on paper themselves they may be able to write the word cat but they might know how how to say the word ridiculous and they could say that's a ridiculous looking cat as a you know, a five-year-old, but they could not write all of that. So if they were to tell it to you, you could write it down and capture their words on paper. So don't let their physical inability to write stop you from choosing the right level for your kids. Brainstorming is another part of Write Shop Primary. This is their story planning. So it may be something like a um, a web where you have a circle in the middle and then you have six spokes on the outside and you take your kids outside and you do a bug walk and on each line of the spoke which kind of this thing looks kind of like a spider they will tell you one thing they saw on their walk I saw a ladybug in the garden a fly flew by my nose the spider crawled across the table they don't all have to go together. You just write these all down. And then later on, they can tell you about their bug walk, and this could become a little story. So you're doing pre-writing as a brainstorming activity. One of the ones that we, um, we teach the kids, and I, I wanna show it to you in book B. Here's book B, okay. Okay, so in book B, we teach kids to use what we call a details wheel. This is a paper plate. You just grab a paper plate, you divide it into sections, and on the paper plate, you write who, what, when, where, you know, just kinds of the regular five W's, who, what, when, where, and then the last one is why or how. Another question that we get about placement is, my child doesn't know how to do everything in the book A level or the book B level. So even though he, the placement test put him in book C, I think I wanna go back. This is what I wanna show you. This is book B and 
This is book C. My fingers are not working. What do we have here? We have a details wheel. They are learning it again. So they learned it halfway through book B and then they practiced with those topics. But if you jump in to book C, this is the very first lesson of book C. And you start out on the first day making this details wheel that looks just like the one in book B. But later on in the lesson, you do something a little bit more with it because now you're talking about what each of these things means. The who is the character, the where is the setting of the time. So does that make sense? If it's important enough for your kids to know it, it's important for us to reteach it. So it may not be at the same really young level that they learned it before. It'll be a step up, but it will still give them everything they need to be able to use that new thing. So don't let that scare you if you are worried about them missing something. Their, their writing project is the story that they write. And they will write different kinds of stories in the different books. One of the stories they write in book C is a mystery story. They actually will write a mystery in book C and they will do one again in Ride Shop Jr. in books D, E, and F. It's not uncommon for somebody to say to me that they're, um, they, they don't need this particular book or curriculum because their kids already learned descriptive writing or they already wrote a mystery. So think of it in this case like fractions. You don't just teach fractions one time in first grade or second grade. Every year, fractions changes. Fractions in high school is way different from fractions in first grade or sixth grade or eighth grade, right? So the same thing here. The mystery story they write in book C is far different from the one they write in book D, which is different from E and different from F. Each one teaches them new skills and takes them to a higher writing level. So. Your first page of each lesson is your materials and supplies list, your objectives for the lesson, and any advanced prep you need to do, which doesn't take much time. But if you if you give yourself 10 minutes on Sunday before your week begins, your, your prep will be all done. You can throw everything into a, um, a manila folder and label it lesson one, lesson two, and then all your pre-writing is ready to go on your first day. Some parents like to prep for the whole three weeks in advance. And at this level, it's not going to take you probably more than 15 minutes to prep for the three weeks, 20 minutes max if you have stuff to cut out. But um, it, it's just really helpful not to have to scramble at the last minute. So when they get to their, um, their story writing, Okay, so here's their writing project. And this is based on their brainstorming. So these are the instructions to you. Again, this is a parent-led program. There's no student workbook or instructions for them. It's all done, you know, as you go through this teacher's manual. So you're going to um, go through the steps of writing it. But it says here at the very beginning, don't forget to adjust the writing project for a younger or more reluctant writer by doing smaller steps or challenge um, your advanced writer with flying higher. And here's a text box that appears in every lesson on the day of the writing. Smaller steps is a way that you can reduce anxiety or pressure. Like this one says a reluctant writer may feel more comfortable telling a familiar story, retelling it instead of writing a story that they make up their, themselves. Flying higher is expanding details in a mystery challenge an accelerated student to add more detail to her writing project. So you can see how using one level for a couple of kids would work great because you have ways that you can adapt the activities. 
The other thing that you want to look for in your teacher's manual is this really important little box that says parents say. When we were beta testing our books, we got loads and loads and loads of feedback and on each activity and parents who said, okay, like this one, to take the pressure off my reluctant artist, we cut our pictures from magazines and also used our own family photos. So instead of asking her child to draw the pictures, which was the main activity, they used another option. And if you see that and go, that would be perfect for us, then you've got an idea from another Red Shop parent. After they do their writing project, they are going to do some simple self-editing. The self-editing is going to be very, very gentle. When you are in book A, so again, we're in the K-1 book, it may ask them to look for things like, um, do we have, do we start our letter, our, our sentence with a capital letter? Do we put a period at the end? And even that won't necessarily happen early on because we don't even introduce periods until about mm, less than six. So that's not quite two thirds of the way through the book, but not early on. Um, and they're also not writing paragraphs here. They're writing stacked sentences or you are writing the stacked sentences for them. So it, the editing is just very, very gentle and simple. Do you like what you wrote? Is there anything you want to change? In book B, which is the green level, you have more questions that you'll ask them and you'll start to look for things like some spelling words. Um, you may also look for um, adding a more colorful word to replace a weak one. So again, you've got some different ideas in here, but not full blown, pull out the red pen, mess up their papers. Um, and speaking of that, just a suggestion that if your child is super sensitive to having their papers marked up, um, make a photocopy of their paper or um, type it out for them. Um, I think at this age, it's just nice to see their own handwriting. So I would just stick with the photocopy, but that is just, it's a game changer for those kids who are, have anxiety about having their papers marked. So that, and the other thing you can use is post-it notes, which is almost better to use with the older kids because the younger ones, you actually do need to make some, some notes on their papers. But when they get to book C, about three lessons in, we introduce a printed checklist. This is not one that comes with the curriculum, but it's one that they make as part of their computer capers activity at the end of lesson three. It's just a few simple things to look for, like capitalization, punctuation, a beginning, middle, and end. There are not very many things that they're looking for. They, they learn to make this on the computer, and then they can print one out for each of the following uh, remaining lessons. Uh, when they get to book D, E, and F, they will have a printed checklist. So you can see the slow progression as we go through Write Shop um, from no checklists to make your own checklist, to simple checklists, to more complex checklists, and then all the way to our junior and high school level where they have a specific checklist for every lesson. So you go through really gently, choose just a few things to fix and you move on. They don't have to rewrite it. it you just wanna make this fun and engaging for them. The last thing they will do in each lesson is polish and publish their story. So here they will create a craft out of their story. So maybe they will make some kind of a book or um, they uh, like one of the activities where they retell a, a nursery rhyme. They have, like if they're doing the old woman in the shoe, they have a, a shoe cut out and out of construction paper and the paper pages are cut to fit so that the shoe is the cover and then the inside pages, each one has a different sentence that goes with the story. So that's one way that they can publish. At the very beginning, they make a story kite. They um, put their story on a piece of construction paper. You roll it up into a cylinder, punch a couple holes in the side and put a piece of yarn through it, put some streamers on the end, and then the child can fly the kite around and tell their story, which is one sentence that probably you wrote down for them underneath their picture. So 
Giving them an opportunity to publish their story in a crafty way is another hands-on activity that they enjoy and a way for you to make sure their writing is being shown to an audience, which is always important for young children. I did not mention, and I see this my little stack here that I forgot to say early on in the pre-writing, way at the beginning, every lesson includes a picture book suggestion that goes along with the theme of the lesson. So if they were doing an animal theme, it could be any kind of book that has an animal. It can be a nonfiction book about skunks. It can be a um, Gerald and Piggy book. It can be a mouse or moose book. Um, it doesn't matter. You, you know, you just, you just need to have a picture book handy. We give you suggestions in the back of the teacher's manual. Lots of different kinds of books that you can find online or at your library or on your own bookshelves. Honestly, you can probably find most of everything you need already at home. So that is the overview of Red Shop Primary, a fun, engaging, hands-on activity um, for your kids. Uh, light on the academics, heavy on the fun and engagement. A lot of, it's a time for you and your kids to really connect in a special and fun way over words and um, you know, coming up with great ideas. Gosh, you know, you can do things like make portable word banks. And if your child is, is just starting to be able to copy words, like they see the word color, they could write it down, even though they may not know how to spell it themselves. So if they're writing their color story in lesson six of book A, they're still not gonna have much written vocabulary available to them, but this tells them color words, like different words for purple, or different words for yellow, not synonyms, but words that's, that are that color. So you can see all the different ways that they can use this, make a portable word bank for season words, make a portable word bank about trains, make one about family members, and you open it up and instead of all the color words on the top, it might say, um, you know, in, in my family, um, and it could have grandma, grandpa, you know, just names like that. Um, my family's names, Shannon, Becky, Aunt Mary. And, and so, you know, some like our train one that we have, everything's just on one side. It's not broken down into subheadings. So it just depends on how you use it. But these are really valuable for your kids um, who are um, struggling to write. Before we started homeschooling, my kids were in public school and their teacher, I remember in the first grade class, used to make a word bank for them on the board. And they would all talk about words together. She would write them on the board and then they would see them to use in their writing. It's a really valuable tool. So that was just a digression, but that's it. That's Write Shop Primary. If you have any questions, you can visit our very informative website, writeshop.com. You can also go to our contact form and reach out to us by email or phone. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, vendor exhibit, and uh, we will talk to you soon.